ties that can be easily uh, dot connected to confirm uh, what um, some of us have been saying for decades and that is a the world's controlled by uh, people uh, from the shadows that we we don't see and b their agenda is played out through puppets that we see in the public arena based on lies making it up and this last point about just making something up and claiming it to be true and then acting on the fact or the the claim that it is true is how this whole global agenda uh, kicks on forward and I've got a series of stories um, this week that um, confirm various aspects of that basic theme and I'm going to start with one by the veteran investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, who has broken many major stories in his uh, career. And um, this week he revealed, uh, well, I say revealed, he kind of confirmed with his background information and uh, research what anyone with half a brain cell on active duty uh, knew anyway. And that is that there was no evidence whatsoever that President Assad ordered a chemical attack on his own people uh, and on um, anti-Assad, um, uh, quote, rebels. Uh, and yet, President Trump, knowing that, ordered 59 Tomahawk missiles to be fired at Syria. And um, Hirsch quotes a number of insiders, people close to uh, Trump. And um, one of them uh, said, or it's quoted by Hirsch as saying, none of this makes any sense, i.e. the Tomahawk attack. We know there was no chemical attack. The Russians are furious, claiming we have the real intel and know the truth. I guess it didn't matter whether we elected Clinton or Trump. Well, again, some of us have been pointing out that it doesn't matter who you vote for because the same hidden hand still gets in for a very long time. It's not just Trump and Clinton. It's uh, involving Obama, Bush, all of them. Um, we see different parties, but actually it's the same hidden hand with a little bit of um, different window dressing. And what this whole thing in Syria is about, and, and the reason that Hirsch was able to um, uh, confirm that it was all done on a lie, this um, Tomahawk attack, is because um, there was a list. I mean, I've talked about this in previous video casts and at great detail in my books. There was a list of countries that were laid out in September 2000. They were decided long before that. And they included Iraq, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, Sudan, uh, North Korea, uh, all listed for regime change uh, using uh, multiple theater wars. And uh, the document that listed them also talked about moving towards the democratization or regime change in uh, in China. So they came in, the people that wrote this, uh, this list called the Project for the New American Century, they came into power with the Bush administration in early 2001. And immediately they ticked off um, Iraq. I say immediately, it took them uh, a uh, horrendous um, false flag um, staged by the um, intelligence and military community 9-11 to get the justification to go into um, Afghanistan and then to start picking this list off. So in 2003, they lied about weapons of mass destruction and ticked off Iraq. And uh, since then, other administrations, both sides of the Atlantic, have ticked off Libya 
and they thought they would tick off Syria in pretty much the same time or not much more than it took to dispose of Gaddafi in Libya. Thanks to the Russians coming in to support President Assad in Syria, that has not happened. And so they are getting desperate. Their list is being delayed because Syria should have gone by now because they want to move on to uh, their biggest prize in this uh, uh, list, certainly in, in Middle and Near Eastern terms, Iran, which is why all the rhetoric is going on about uh, Iran now. So what is happening is that um, the United States is trying desperately to um, find a reason to directly attack the Assad regime and militarily and remove it. So this is um, one way. It's to say he's done this chemical attacks and we must save the people. Uh, and the other is to take out um, Syrian uh, Air Force planes and uh, Syrian uh, regime uh, supporters, which is what the United States have been doing recently, in the hope that there will be a retaliation, which the United States can then say, we can't have that, we've been attacked, and away they go. They are desperate uh, for a reason to directly uh, attack uh, the Assad regime in uh, Damascus. So this Hirsch article uh, goes on to say that top um, US officials, they, um, they obviously condemned Assad for this alleged chemical attack. Uh, evidence, zilch, uh, just keep lying and keep repeating the same thing. A great form of mind control that. Just keep repeating the same thing and eventually people believe it because, well, everyone's saying it. Um, and he quotes um, a senior Trump advisor as saying, no one knew the provenance of the photographs of the chemical attack. Uh, we didn't know who the children were who or how um, they got hurt. Uh, sarin, which is the, the gas that was supposedly used, sarin actually is a very easy uh, gas to detect because it penetrates paint and all one would have to do is to get a paint sample. We knew there was a cloud, we knew it hurt people, but you can't jump from there to certainty that Assad had hidden sarin from the UN because he wanted to use it. But you can make that jump if you are desperate to find an excuse to up the ante on removing the Assad regime. This um, senior Trump advisor goes on, according to Hirsch, the president saw the photographs of poisoned little girls and said it was an Assad atrocity. It's typical of human nature. You jump to the conclusion you want. Intelligence analysts do not argue with a president. They're not going to tell the president, if you interpret the data this way, I quit. Well, maybe they should. Um, and he talks here about um, he saw poisoned little girls and, and Trump, of course, talked in justification of the tomahawk attack about the killing of beautiful little children. What about the beautiful little children uh, in their staggering numbers that have been killed and maimed by the United States in attacks on the uh, Middle East alone since um, September 2000, when this list of regime change, change uh, countries appeared? And um, what about what's happening now every day in, in Ye uh, Yemen? with weapons supplied by Britain and America. The hypocrisy is unbelievable. Um, and when he says, Hirsch, that President Trump made the decision to make the tomahawk strike um, because he'd seen the pictures and he decided that was what it was going to do, there's no way that he was going to be allowed to order that attack unless people like the Defence Secretary, uh, Mad Dog, Mattis, agreed with it. In the inner core, this was all uh, planned to happen. And Hirsch reports that 39 
of America's leading 100 newspapers published editorials supporting the attack on Syria based on a lie, including the New York Times, Washington Post and Wall Street Journal. And of course, you might remember that amazing quote, amazing to me anyway, um, from a CNN host called Farid Sakaria the morning after the Tomahawk attack when he said, um, who'd been very critical of Trump up to that point. I think Donald Trump became president of the United States last night. I think this was actually a big moment. Yeah, I mean, bombing people, usually with brown faces, uh, based on lies, is uh, of course exactly what presidents of the United States um, tend to do. So what we've had now is two claims of chemical attacks by Assad on the population, um, both of which have been supported by no evidence whatsoever. And there has been no investigation worth the name into that uh, chemical attack that the Tomahawk missiles were justified by. Because if you investigate a lie too closely, even, indeed, even at all, then it gets exposed as a lie, which is the last thing you want. So just keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it and crack on um, with your agenda. Now, that um, is um, very relevant to uh, another story this week. In the wake of the Hirsch story, we had this White House, another chemical weapons attack potentially planned by Syria's Assad. So in, in the wake of being um, exposed for firing 59 missiles based on a lie, they come up with another lie. This is how this, it works. Keep bombarding the public with lies and at least some of them will be believed by a great majority. We need to, we need to start not just to be skeptical about what these people say, but be aware that the vast majority of the time, they're not even skewing the truth. They are giving us blatant lies, just made up so that they can justify the action that they want to take. So this is the latest lie. The White House is warning Syria's President Bashar al-Assad and uh, military of a heavy price. Ooh, macho man. Don't sound like the United States, does it? As the uh, US alleges potential preparations are underway for more chemical weapons attacks, the Trump administration insisted the US is there to eliminate ISIS. Well, that's the last thing it's there to do because the United States created ISIS for many reasons, one of them to remove Assad, which the Russians have thrown a spanner in the works of. Um, and that's why they're so desperate now to kick on with what the plan was all along, which is remove Assad at any um, uh, price. And the guy who made this announcement about, oh, he's preparing for another chemical attack, was this White House press secretary, Sean Spicer. Um, one of several completely vacuous people that are wheeled out to um, talk to the media about uh, events in the White House, in the Pentagon, in, um, in the State Department, and, and basically lie through their teeth or repeat lies they've been given anyway. And so Sean Spicer said, the United States has identified potential preparations for another chemical weapons attack by the Assad regime that would likely result in the mass murder of civilians, including innocent children. The activities are similar to preparations the regime made before its April the 4th, 2017 chemical weapons attack. See, don't, don't acknowledge that you had no um, evidence of that attack by Assad in April. Don't acknowledge that. Just keep repeating it. This is the, this is the great method of mind control and perception manipulation, repeating the lie as often as possible. And um, 
evidence that these preparations were taking place. Zilch. And why would Assad, in the case of the, the last two alleged but not true um, chemical attacks, why would Assad give these psychopaths the very excuse they need to do what he knows has been the case all along, which is to, to remove him and destroy Syria and impose their own regime. No evidence, none whatsoever, just keep saying it. Oh, and I did mention vacuous. Well, if you can think of a word meaning vacuous in, in uh, many, many times more powerful form, then that's the word to use for the US ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, who um, said any further attacks done to the people of Syria will be blamed on Assad, but also on Russia and Iran who support him killing his own people. I mean, every time I see Nikki Haley, I wonder if her mother knows she's out. She's a child and yet, is the spokesperson at the UN for what is Murder Incorporated. And um, the US has also issued airstrikes against um, alleged Iranian-backed ground forces, shot down a pro-government uh, drone and uh, an alleged Iranian drone earlier this month, as well as a Syrian jet last week. Now, the reason they're doing this in terms of um, Iran is it's on that list and, and that's where they wanna go. And why they're doing it to Syria is, as I said earlier, they want um, Syria or Russia to bite so that the, the all out um, conflict can take place. So if we look at, um, God, my hair's sticking up today. Um, if we look at um, the regimes in the Western countries, as this list has been ticked off, you can see where the hidden hand is working all the way um, through them. So we had Bush and Blair, first of all, lying about weapons of mass destruction, and they picked off and ticked off Iraq. Then we had um, Obama and Cameron, uh, the British Prime Minister, uh, different parties, different people, and they ticked off Libya on the list and um, thought they were going to tick off um, Syria, certainly started the conflict in Syria, um, and that's ongoing. And now we have Trump coming in. Trump is the outsider, he's different, and um, he is continuing with Syria, and he is now targeting Iran. Of course, North Korea's on the list as well, we've heard lots about that, and, um, and, and Russia's there uh, as well. So um, whoever gets in the White House, the same hidden hand is in control, and that's the same in the Western capital cities in general. And uh, this week, uh, again, the ante being upped in terms of Syria. Spy planes and um, aircraft carrier, US boosts pres presence of Syria amid weapons of mass destruction accusations. So uh, you lie about preparations for weapons of uh, mass destruction, chemical weapons use, and then you use that as an excuse to move more um, military hardware and spy planes into Syria. Uh, US surveillance planes have intensified flights off the coast of Syria after Washington accused Damascus of plotting a chemical attack. Meanwhile, the aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush, how appropriate, named after a paedophile and psychopath, is um, en route to the Israeli port of Haifa. Enthusiasts monitoring air traffic in the region have logged the flights of three types of US spy planes off the coast of Syria over the past week. All three planes were active uh, on Tuesday after the White House publicly claimed that the government in Syria was preparing a chemical attack and warned Damascus would pay a heavy price if it was um, carried out. The Israeli media, meanwhile, noted that a US aircraft carrier is about to visit Israel for the first time since 2000. The USS George H.W. Bush will be calling 
into the port of Haifa for a four-day visit beginning July the 1st, according to a um, Israeli newspaper. The George H.W. Bush has a crew of 5,700 and carries about 90 aircraft. It has been deployed to the Persian Gulf since January in support of the war effort against Islamic State. Yeah, I'm sure that was the main motivation. And what's happening is, in terms of armaments, weaponry and troop numbers, the numbers are increasing in that region in and around Syria all the time because they want this to kick off. Uh, not because it has to, but because they uh, they need it as part of their ongoing agenda of um, world transformation. Now, if, if you want a uh, an example of the the scale of ludicrousness that we're dealing with here, um, on Wednesday, U.S. officials insinuated this report says that their threats had persuaded Damascus to abandon the attack plans. I wish I was making this up, I really do. It appears that they took the warning seriously, US Defense Secretary James Mad Dog Mattis told reporters on his way to Brussels for a NATO meeting, they didn't do it. So, you lie about preparations by Assad for a chemical attack. And when it doesn't happen, because it was never going to happen because you lied, you then say, see, um, because we warned him every price, he didn't do it. They think the human race is um, stupid beyond any possible definition of the word stupid. Of course, in lots of cases, that's true. But unfortunately for them, in far from every case, and people are starting to get it now in ever greater numbers. I can tell you, this is this is Nikki Haley, um, vacuous times, whatever number you want to um, think of. I can tell you that due to the president's actions, we did not see an incident, said U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley. Uh, Trump's actions saved many innocent men, women and children, she told the House Foreign Affairs Committee on Wednesday. These are the people running our world. Seven plus billion people. These these moronic psychopaths are dictating our lives. What are we doing? Accepting this. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is a very interesting story and confirmation of so much about what's going on. It comes from a I'll call him a defector prince from Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is Prince um, Khalid bin Farhan al Saud. Now, he defected from the family in 2013 because he was sick of their lies and corruption. I mean, if you want another uh, word that means corruption and um, mendacity, then Saud is a very good one to use because the whole Saudi regime is based on lies and corruption on a scale that is indescribable, right down to the fact of where that regime came from and the fact that it's no more royal than I am. And this defector prince from Saudi Arabia confirmed that the US and Israel control the Saudi royals. Well, we kind of knew that, to say the least. And he posted information that said, um, or he said it came from inside the family, because the, the House of Saud is starting to be at war with itself. Um, he said this information came from inside the Saudi uh, uh, royal family. And it was about American and Israeli conditions 
um, for helping the current king, uh, Salman, uh, to succeed his father in 2015. Now, he talks about the fact that the United States and Israel helped Salman become the successor to his father, hence king when his father died. And interestingly, in the run-up to his father dying in the years before, two other um, members of the Saudi royal family, higher up the pecking order than this Salman, current king, died. And as a result of that, this fella, who was going to be nowhere near becoming king of Saudi Arabia, was suddenly the next in line. And this defector prince said that in return for this help to allow Salman to become king, um, Salman had to agree to absolute obedience to the US and Israel, work to settle all Gaza Palestinians in North Sinai um, uh, to be uh, paid for by the Saudis and the United Arab Emirates, destroy Palestinian group Hamas and secure ownership of Sanifer Island from Egypt. Now, why, why would part of the deal of manipulating Salman to be king of Saudi Arabia be having Egypt hand over an island to Saudi Arabia? Well, the background becomes quite um, straightforward. This um, handing over of this Sanifer island by Egypt to Saudi Arabia, which, funnily enough, sits back in amazement, is now happening, uh, means that um, the waters around it cease to be um, Egyptian territorial waters and become international territorial waters to the benefit of um, Israeli shipping operating out of the port of um, Elat. This is according to the um, defector prince. Uh, and now we're seeing Egypt, uh, the president, uh, another American puppet, uh, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, transferring ownership of uh, Sanifer Island and an, an island next to it called uh, Tehran Island to Saudi Arabia, despite public protests. And the island sits at the entrance to the uh, Gulf of um, Aqaba, um, which allows Israeli shipping access to the Red Sea. So this is how the world really works, while on the face of it, through the mainstream media and through political um, pronouncements, we see a completely different narrative and explanation for why things are going on. And one point about Saudi Arabia is uh, this King Salman chap, he's just a puppet anyway, a, a front person because the real power now in Saudi Arabia is um, uh, another US asset, uh, Prince Mohammed bin um, uh, Salman, who's been given control, uh, he's the crown prince, been given control of the military in Saudi Arabia, oil and the economy, even the entertainment business. Um, can't think of much of that in Saudi Arabia, looking on. Um, and in effect, um, control of foreign affairs. And they're now calling this guy, for quite obvious reasons, Mr. Everything. And uh, Britain sells more arms to Saudi Arabia than any other country. Of course, uh, the United States massively arms uh, Saudi Arabia. And those arms are now being used to create catastrophe for civilians in uh, Yemen. But that puts Yemen, you see, in a completely different light. Because if Saudi Arabia is this defective prince says, and the evidence is overwhelming in support. If Saudi Arabia is simply being told what to do by America and Israel, then the, the um, war against Yemen must be part of this, that's what you're going to do, which makes Yemen a, uh, a proxy war by the United States 
and uh, the controllers of Saudi Arabia against um, the people of Yemen and anything else the Saudi Arabians do. This thing that's kicked off now with um, Qatar, where they are being targeted by these other terrorist funding people in the uh, Middle East for funding terrorists. I mean, that's a cracker. I mean, you know, the extraordinary nature of, of the the lies and hypocrisy is, is well, extraordinary. You've got uh, terrorist funding and supporting Qatar being targeted now by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates for funding um, terrorism when they fund terrorism. Saudi Arabia more than anybody. Why? Well, because they're just a front for America, Israel, and you can throw in Britain there big time um, as well. And um, another story this week, um, talking of Israel, and we should, anti-Assad terrorists being treated in Israeli hospitals. So what we've had more and more is, um, is Israel um, uh, uh, making attacks uh, inside Syria, because that Israel, of course, is all part of this remove Assad um, movement. And it says local sources disclose that several terrorists who have been wounded in a battle with the um, Syrian government forces have been taken to an Israeli hospital. And, and these are full blown bloody terrorists that we're talking about here. And of course, Israeli, Israeli, um, Israeli's regime is, um, the Israeli regime is anti-terrorist, except that it's supporting terrorists all over the place. Um, and this is not the first time that it's been exposed that um, Israel has been in many ways, not just through uh, medical help, but in many other ways, supporting those terrorist groups that are seeking to remove um, Assad. And we had this, we had this um, situation this week where Israel attacked targets in Syria because they said a stray, not targeted on purpose, a stray uh, Syrian uh, missile dropped in the Golan Heights and therefore they retaliated by attacking Syrian targets. The Golan Heights um, where this stray missile dropped um, and Israel was saying that's outrageous how can you do that in the Golan Heights has actually been illegally occupied by Israel since 1967. It's part of Syria. You, you, you can't make this stuff up. And with these people, you do not need to. And the whole totality of this uh, that we're seeing, both from Israel, the United States, etc., they are attempts to make Syria bite. And thus they can say, we have to now directly attack the Syrian regime. And of course, none of this, none of this could happen. None of this could be sold. None of these lies could be sold to the people without the mainstream media just accepting them and repeating them without question. And so um, as part of this, dot connecting week we've had the stories about cnn um, where uh one of their producers a guy called john bonnyfeld or bonnyfield um was caught on a hidden camera um by a, an organization called uh, project veritas it's kind of an investigative journalist organization um, and he was caught on camera saying that the alleged um, scandal of Russian involvement in the um, American election to help Trump get in was mostly bullshit and that CNN was pushing the story for ratings. Well, it's more than ratings. The reason that this whole fake uh, Russia uh, United States election story was um, created and has been pushed and pushed and pushed with no evidence whatsoever is because they wanted to make sure 
there they were um, stopping any coming together of the United States and Russia. They don't want cooperation between those two because the idea in the end is to is to um, go to war with Russia. That's why we've got all these NATO troops um, building up and building up and building up on the Russian border. That's why no one has an election these days unless uh, Russia is trying to manipulate the outcome. And so this whole Russian um, hacking story has been completely made up and repeated and repeated and repeated by the mainstream media until for lots of people it becomes accepted truth but fortunately people are waking up and they're finding it more and more difficult to sell this shite uh, also uh, this week involving CNN we had um, a CNN reporter and two editors uh, resigning fired let's be fair um, over their involvement in a story alleging a congressional investigation into links between Trump officials and a Russian investment fund, which um, the channel had to retract. And of course, the, the crime, from CNN's point of view, that the reporter and the editors committed was not lying about the Trump-Russia connection. It was getting caught doing it. Oh, we, no, we're CNN. You know, we have values. They've got to go. You mean they've got to go because they got caught. Um, and so you can pull all this together with the theme of this web that I, this global web that I've been talking about, writing about for nearly 30 years. Because you have a web, you have a spider in the center where it's all this is being orchestrated from. All of it outside of the public arena in the unseen. And governments are, t uh, are connected to this web, particularly Western governments. This is why they all move as one unit. You know, you've got um, Trump um, uh, on no evidence whatsoever launching f uh, 59 um, Tomahawk missiles on Syria. And you have Germany and NATO and this, oh, incredibly ridiculous man, Michael Fallon, the um, UK Defence Secretary, who has a... Um, he has a, um, a button in the center of his back. And when you press it, he says, I agree with the Americans. It's all you have to do, you know, and, and he agrees with the Americans um, that there has to be a, um, uh, a heavy price paid by um, Assad for this alleged chemical attack preparation that's not happening. And he, of course, supported um, the um, 59 Tomahawk missiles fired at uh, at Syria, and and this this coordination comes through this web that connects it all. Uh, it, it connects the U.S., it connects Israel, it connects Saudi Arabia, and it connects the United States and France and Germany. Then you have the media owners of the media major media outlets that promote these fake stories, and they're attached to the same web. So their coordination comes through that web in support of the narrative. And, and, you know, I say this to journalists who claim to be journalists, who are real journalists, who actually um, are in the mainstream but can see, it's, see it for what it is. How long are you just going to frickin' sit there and just every day write things you know not to be true just to pay the frickin' mortgage. Have you got kids and grandkids? What kind of world do you think they're going to live in if this goes on? Get your frickin' arse in gear. <laughs>